Under the Silver Lake, a film made for the American Hollywood conspiracy theorist, loaded with symbolism, allegory, and hidden messages, with an ending that is somewhat anticlimactic and very confusing, to say the least. Yeah. So what does it all mean? Well, it's a film that is so densely loaded that you can extract and see many different layers within it, depending upon who and at what level it is being perceived at. It's a film that allows for infinite speculation, which is the best type of film to overanalyze or lose your mind to. So I'm going to give my own speculations and overanalyzations into what I think is at the core of this misunderstood and underappreciated film. The film operates on two levels, the internal psychological struggle that Sam is processing through due to his depression around his breakup, but then also as commentary on conspiracy theorizing, pop culture, and full-blown mental illness. Yeah, it's narcissism and entitlement 101. The entire population is suffering from mild paranoia. Throughout the film, Sam is on a constant investigation and hunt for clues, and as this takes place, the film itself is perpetually telling and hinting to you what is actually going on. Every scene is a clue. Is that engraved? Yeah, from an old boyfriend. Meaning literally her older than her boyfriend. This man has literally been the face of the city for decades. The symbolism of the three women with the male figure of the weird tomb cult is built into everything in this film. The three Barbie doll figures in Sarah's room, the poster and film of How to Marry a Millionaire, obvious allegorical parallels, Jesus and the three brides of Dracula, an enlightened male figure with three undead or going to die brides. When Sam arrives at the purgatory party, Jesus and Dracula's brides are performing the Eternity Song. All these holy trinities of women male gaze. Three, 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 three. You and I beneath the surface where the lovers cannot breathe. Eternity. Again, directly referring to the tomb cult and what happened to Sarah being buried in the earth. The song is also being played by Sarah at the pool and with the other set of girls being followed by Sam in the car, just constantly programming their belief systems into them. That there's a message in the music. The irony here is, is that Sam learns that there is a hidden message contained within their song. I'm pretty sure that's not true. To find the answers, he goes as far as to beat up Jesus. All right, so who wrote the song? <laughs> they were delivered anonymously. Listens to the songs on backmasking. Does a schizo level decoding and numerological breakdown of the song. Does some random shit at the Griffith Observatory leading to the homeless king. A lot of homeless people have severe mental illness and schizophrenia, right? Yes. But the answer he is looking for is literally just built into the overt lyrics of the song. Hidden in plain sight, not even hidden at all. The lyrics tell him exactly what has happened to Sarah. Jesus wouldn't hide a message in a message. In the act of conspiracy theorizing, it's easy for people to fall into the trap of trying to decode all of these hidden super esoteric messages or even find patterns where there is none to be found, rather than simply seeing the larger, more obvious picture. The conspiracy of how culture is being engineered through pop culture creation. The message is not hidden, it's blasted in your face everywhere, it is the culture itself. This culture creation and control is personified and represented by the songwriter, which ironically is where all of the schizo level decoding leads Sam to. The songwriter is corporate Hollywood media and advertising. Those that govern what is or isn't popular, from the rebellious Green Day punk rockers to gangster rap, guiding the pseudo-rebellion of the youth of that decade. Alright, let's go back to the opening scene real quick. The very first thing we see is Beware the Dog Killer, but it's from the inside of the window, so in reverse. Dog in reverse is God. Make of that what you will. A hot chick jiggling in a Jim Morrison t-shirt. Interesting fun fact is Jim Morrison's father, Captain George Stephen Morrison, played a major role in the Navy in the Gulf of Tonkin. He helped create the fiction given to the American public in order to justify the Vietnam War. This is perhaps the type of thing that the songwriter might personify. 
Many famous musicians have odd ties to the military, especially from that era. You can check out this book on Laurel Canyon for more facts on all of that. But it's like as Jim Morrison's father was getting the American public on board with the Vietnam War through the Gulf of Tonkin false flag, Jim Morrison himself was helping to manufacture anti-war hippie culture. You see the irony in that, right? When you were 15 and rebelling, you were rebelling to my music. And whoever the actor is that played the songwriter deserves an award or something. It's an absolutely crazy scene. All right, so that's what I think is the general message of the film. But let's look at some of the more specific uses of conspiracy theory level symbolism that is littered throughout this film. So Sam lives in apartment 23. According to Jim Carrey, 2 divided by 3 is... 666. 23, a relevant number within occult and esoteric symbolism. Maybe that's why mind controlled Bucky in Captain America Winter Soldier was kept in cell 23. Or maybe not, and that's all just complete nonsense. But just as some people listening to the video will get turned off and just instantly click off the video for me speculating into the 23 symbolism because it's just too fucking weird, this is what the skunk smell attached to Sam symbolizes. The repulsion people may have to when people start getting all overly conspiracy theorist or start saying things that are just too far outside of the box. You don't have a good smell about you. The nurse that he hooks up with, aka just another stripper or escort, clearly decides to leave when Sam comes clean about what his notes by the bed actually are. I'll be back when the smell goes away. Meaning metaphorically when he stops talking like that. She's able to tolerate the smell before he opened his mouth, but some of the head tracking and eye movements on the Wheel of Fortune is genuinely schizo-level delusional stuff. But his rant that goes along with it actually has a degree of validity. I think it's fucking ridiculous to assume that media has just one purpose. But there is a fine line between seeing patterns and inventing patterns, right? Or apophenia. I think I'm pronouncing that word right. Apophenia. Creating correlations and connections between things that are actually just random. So the owl's kiss or the owl of Minerva hidden on the dollar bill as shown in the movie, which is a real thing anyone can see on the dollar bill themselves. Owls are wise hidden creatures in the shadows of society. It is the same giant owl the weirdo elites at the Bohemian Grove worship. Alex Jones Conspiracy Theory 101 type of stuff. If you're not aware about all of that, you're probably watching the wrong video. Where did you come from? How did you get to this video? Why are you on this part of the internet? You can hear an owl hoo-hooing after he states this. I feel like somebody's following me. But is this being paranoid and neurotic to feel important? It's narcissism and entitlement 101 or something to be genuinely fearful over. Oh, fuck. I think the owl's kiss embodies two different things in the film. A fembot-like level female assassin that uses sex and blackmail, you know the stuff that might happen at Bohemian Grove type of places, but then also might just be a metaphor for self-deletion. Sam's encounter with her and the gun he gets from the songwriter kind of hints at that potential with how he is behaving. It's exactly what the Under the Silver Lake comic writer is writing about in his comic on the dog killer. And the crime scene itself sure does look like that is a possibility. Sam seeing her on tape may have just been his mental coping mechanism for the dude deleting himself, and I think it's made to be intentionally ambiguous with no clear right answers. Also, The Owl's Kiss reminds me of the director's previous film, It Follows. The Owl's Kiss also just ends up leaving Sam alone after he leaves his apartment and gets with the older hippie bird lady because I think it pushes his depression back, which is why it was at its peak just before he's about to get evicted. The cherry popping balloons and the dick drawn on the car, the dick on the bathroom wall is just a general use of sexual symbolism, a major driving force of the pop culture and advertising. 
Sex work and human trafficking is a major theme of the film. The escort service shooting star suggests it provides celebrity level, high level chicks. Every set of three escorts can be seen being handled by the one eyed pirate dude. You can read into that as you like. One eye. When the redheaded escort asks Sam for food, she gets pizza out of the fridge. He also writes the hidden message of the song he's decoding within a pizza box, right? Not to get all QAnon, but is the use of pizza symbolic via the high-level escort? Perhaps. Maybe. The psychological layer of the film is that Sam is processing through his depression because of his breakup. Hooking up with and meeting different girls but he doesn't actually really like most of them. Well, aside from Sarah, Sarah and her dog momentarily filled that void of his ex, but that quickly went away. And if the entire conspiracy of Sarah going into the tomb was just made up in his own head, perhaps it was just his way of coping with the feeling of being ghosted. Being ghosted after a hookup or a relationship of someone you actually do like can feel like the person is basically dead or buried in the middle of the earth. But at the same time, it might all be real. I think it's, again, meant to be intentionally ambiguous and can be real depending upon which way you look at it. Maybe the tombs themselves are the thing that is under the Silver Lake. But do notice that Sam's favorite Playboy cover completely matches and mirrors how Jefferson Seven's daughter dies within the Silver Lake. So at the end of the film, when Max is evicted because clearly he has no money left, he basically just gets a sugar mama, linking up with the bird lady and choosing to live there for financial reasons. Which is ironic because likely the same type of financial situation is what got all of these escorts involved with the weird cult escort shit in the first place. He's kind of just doing the same thing and being a male escort. What's it saying? I'm not sure. And what is the parrot saying in the movie? Well, nothing. Nonsense. And it doesn't really matter. Attempting to decode what the parrot is saying is meaningless, just like going overboard with numerology and overanalyzation into just things that are basically irrelevant. When it comes down to it, the only thing actually relevant to Sam is having a home, a place to live, and the ability to support himself and live. That's it. The world of attempting to decode Hollywood symbolism is just meaningless. I know it's kind of hypocritical for me to be saying that while making this video, but what did the Under the Silver Lake comic book writer get in the end? Pretty much nothing. It's all silly and it's all meaningless. And no, I don't think Sam is the dog killer. The final scene with the homeless king, which I think the homeless king on a psychological level could represent Sam's deep subconscious. When he is telling the king why he actually has the dog treats in his pocket, it symbolizes him getting over the breakup. Hence why immediately after this, the billboard is being painted over. I think it's possible there is no single actual dog killer and it's more of an urban legend that has been exaggerated due to the Under the Silver Lake comic. Have you heard about these dog killers? Um, there's more than one. The Under the Silver Lake comic may have had fragments of truth within them, but there is also urban legends that can get exaggerated and distorted, attempting to create explanations for things that really have no actual explanation. And the weird tomb cult, I think just represents the weird esoteric circles that operate at the top of powerful places. The promise of some other utopian paradise only accessible to a select elite few, likely just another exaggerated story that is told to people to influence their behavior. The different classes of society have their own mythological narratives, really no different than some of the wild beliefs and speculations of the Under the Silver Lake comic book writer. Scientology is a perfect example of something like this. I do entertain the possibility that the entirety of the film is just delusions and hallucinations of Sam, but I think interpreting it that way is far less interesting. Regardless, the symbolism is the same, and even in the most delusional forms of conspiracy theory apophenia, there may be fragments of actual truth. Anyways, I think that about covers it. I know there's probably a lot more symbolism that I can decode in this film. I just wanted to focus on the main more important aspects of the film and not have this video be like an hour long. So uh, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, comment below. Thank you very much and bye.